let us move on to the section 6 that is a process. Now, when we I have been using this term so often since the start of this course, but what exactly is a process, what constitutes a business system and what are the process input, outputs and feedback, what is a like the impact of the uh, processes on the business fine, what is actually process thinking, process ownership, repository and reflection. These are all the terms which I want that my students who learn lean from me should understand from the very beginning. For example, if you are going for a job right, or you are already working and you see a process map or you see a value stream map. So, I want that if you are a my student you should be able to decrypt that process map or you should be able to understand that what that value stream map is all about, what they are trying to tell and if you are part of a team so you should be a useful member like you should be able to contribute and ideally you should understand these basic terms and because these terms would be used very often if you are part of any process improvement team right. So, let us start with what is a process. So, process is a series of steps designed to produce a product or service well enough I have told you uh, I have told this thing before. So, basically we use a flow chart to depict a process flow charts depict what are the inputs of the process, how the material or the information flow through the process and finally what is the output of the process. So, this is the job of a flow chart. So, when we talk about value stream maps, we talk about SIPOC, we talk about process maps, all, all of them they just use flow charts right. So, this is the how they just break down each like if it is a product, so you will break down each process and if it is a process you will break down into further tasks or sub processes. So, understanding and improving a process is key of every lean or Six Sigma project. Now, if you are working on a lean or a Six Sigma project, this means either you are trying to develop certain new product or service or you are just trying to improve something which is already there but which has defects. So, what you are ideally going to do is that you will understand that what is the process, what are the inputs, what is the output and what are the root causes of the defects and all this can be seen using a process map. So, example of process for example, we are surrounded by processes. Example if you take in manufacturing, assembling a product is a process. If you talk about um, finance, so billing is a process. If you talk about banking, checking a credit score is a process. So, we are involved in the processes. So, how does a process flowchart looks like? I have used a very very simple example. So, in case like you have hired few people to work for you. So, now you have to pay like you have either you have to make a payment or you have to give a check. So, what the process would look like and the what would be the process flow chart would be like if you want to make one right. So, you will see what are the number of hours they have worked for you and what is the hourly rate. Once you know this, you will calculate the total amount of the payment that whatever you have to pay them for that particular job before any deduction of taxes that is you have to calculate the gross pay fine. Then you have to check whether the payment is over $100 or it is under $100 because if it is over $100 you need to deduct taxes and if it is not uh, or like it is not uh, if it is like less than $100 then you simply have to deduct social security. So, if it is over $100 you will deduct tax plus social security and you will pay the person or you will just print the check. So, this is how a simple flow chart looks like and this is how the value streams would look like when you will see the actual value streams in your companies or the place of work. So, this is how they look, but they would be very big if the processes are huge. So, they can be simple, they can be complicated, but the basic thing is same actually they just break down the process into sub processes steps so that we can understand what is going on where. So, coming to business systems, actually a business system is designed to implement a process or processes. Job of the business system is to make sure that the process inputs are at the right place at right time. 
so that each step of the process has resources it is it uh, it requires right so that the processes can flow smoothly like right? if they have resources whatever is required so there would be no waiting time and etc so this is the job why we have business system so that we can ensure that processes flow smoothly and the goal of the business system is continuous improvement of its products processes or services Business system is responsible for collecting and analyzing data from the processes. Now, what does business systems do? So, they actually collect the data so that they can analyze how the processes are working and this data is further used and other sources that will help in the continuous improvement of the processes. systems and sub processes which obviously form part of the processes and the steps which form part of the sub processes and each part of the system can be broken into a series of processes sub processes and steps so this is your basically a formal introduction of how value stream maps or process maps are created so this is the building block this is the abc right so if you are to create a value stream map or a process map for any product or service for first that you will understand what are the various systems you are working on and then for each system you can give them the name you can add as much detail as you want then each system would have many processes which are working for it right so what we do when we create a value stream map or a process map is that that i would name like i would give who is the process owner like i would maybe i would i can give them the number or i can write down the name of each process then i could add further information like who is the owner of the process what time this process takes to complete how many people are working for it and what kind of inputs go into this process and what is the output right so then each process remember would have many sub processes i can also write information again for each sub process and then each sub process has many steps so this is how we create a detailed picture of our process or of our product or our service and when we do that in this uh, process we understand our processes our products or services in a much better way we understand where the defects are where the lags are or where the areas of improvement are fine so this is why we take so much of pain to create such huge value stream maps and process maps so coming to uh, then we come to process management so basically what is process management it is understanding the process inputs outputs and the feedback what a process gives what are the inputs for that you need to understand the feedback loop a uh, basic information of feedback loop i gave you when i talked about mr walter shuhart of general electric uh, in um, the um, i think so in section 1 in evolution of his evolution of six sigma march of quality so right there i told you that he devised a system that what if we start understanding these outputs and then we can use this data or information what we get from the outputs to improve the inputs and the processes fine so that we can have better outputs so basically a process a feedback loop look something like this it talks about the inputs we can list all the inputs here and then we mention the various process steps and finally what is the output so you understand this output and then you use this information to uh, uh, to like uh, uh, improve the inputs and the process steps so basically feedback loop helps in process control so that's easy to understand because you're using that information to make your processes better so that they stay within the spec limits or the reco customer requirements so it's used for process control process flow charts are elaborated to gain insight and detailed information as i've already told you that you can elaborate processes as much process flow chart as with as much information as you want so that you can have optimum number of inf- optimum number of feedbacks information or whatever detailed information you require to improve that process or product 
So various version of these feedback loops are process maps, value stream maps. So basically what actually we do by creating a process map, a value stream map. We collect information so that we can improve our products and services. Basic purpose is to understand the inputs and outputs of each process step as output of one process step is used as an input of the next step. This also I've mentioned many times that whenever you are working on one process, so never think that this is final. You know, your output can be used by, can be and it is used by another department as a raw material, as an input. So always think that it should be defect free because it will help the overall overall process. Ideally, each step acts as a customer of the previous step and a supplier to the next step. The value to the parent enterprise lies in the quality of these inputs and the outputs. So, what is the actual value? Where is the value? Why we focus so much on whatever the processes are, what are the inputs or what are the outputs? Because these inputs and outputs decide the quality of our products and services and the efficiency with which they are managed. So basically process management is used in two ways that is how the information is collected and how this information is used to enhance the quality of the processes or the outputs fine. So the function of process management is the collection and analysis of the data about inputs and outputs. So what process management does is that we collect information, we collect data about the inputs and the outputs and using this information as a feedback to the process. So we use the collected information, whatever information we got from the data, we will use this information to either adjust the process or improve it. Or the second way is that the process should be designed in such a way so that data collection, analysis and feedback for adjustment and improvement are part of the process itself. This means that you design a process in such way that whatever improvements are required, the feedback and everything forms the part of the process itself, that it goes along the process. So both these approaches show the importance of the design of an appropriate data collection that is how you should be collecting and using the data and, and what kind of analysis and feedback system should be there to improve the processes. So first everything begins with decisions about the points at which data should be collected. That is you need to understand, the team needs to understand that which are the critical points from where data should be collected which should have lot of value to the process. Then we decide upon the measurement system to be used so that we can understand the data whatever it is and then finally what kind of analysis uh, uh, we have to do and what kind of analysis tools we have to do so that we can use this information properly. And finally, decisions pertain to the use of the information. Now we have collected data, we have measured it, we have analyzed it and now time comes that how we use the results we got from this data collection so that we can enhance our processes. Fine. So how this information is used? One way is that information is used as a real time feedback as we do for control charts. Fine. So information is used as real-time feedback to the process triggering adjustments of inputs. Example, we set up control charts and these control charts continuously keep watch on the processes and in case there is any variation, they just show it and we can immediately just adjust or improve our process accordingly, right? So data is collected and reached on, uh, recorded on chart which acts as a data analysis tool Using information gained from the control chart processes, the processes are either improved or they are adjusted. Or the second way is that information would be used in the formation of plans for process improvement. For example, you are having a very stable process, but that stable process is incapable of delivering the desired output. Now you will use the this information that is how whatever data you collected, you measured it and you had now you have a good amount of information that what, what can make your process effective process. So 
you use this information either to create a new process or design a new like you just design a new improvement plan or you just design a new process entirely so that it can give you the desired output. So enterprise systems must per uh, perform process improvement as a part of day to day operation and this shouldn't be done like in 6 months or once a year. Every day you should just do this process improvement so that whatever you are doing you excel at that. Ideally, you should show categories of inputs to a process step and further classify them as controllable, non-controllable, noise or critical. So how you can check that how your processes are performing? So best way is that you simply write the inputs that whatever inputs are going into the process steps and what are the outputs that what is your product and service. For inputs, for example, now you have, you can say that my inputs for certain process are man, machine, methods, management, material, environment or the nature in which we are working, the measurement systems. Then we should classify these inputs further, we can categorize the, these as controllable. For example, I can say my machines and methods are controllable. Then non-controllable that is environment that is not under our control. Then it can be noise, it can be from materials because the raw materials are, which are coming are not being checked and so there is noise factor. Noise is basically some kind of disturbance and then this X is for critical factors that is our measurement systems are really critical. So I think so I have given you enough information of what are, what processes are, what are business processes and what is a process management system.